Hello YouTube, we're going to make a vacuum jar to use with that nebulizer vacuum pump in the other video. We're going to take this off the razor blade. Right, don't cut yourself, just work your way. I try to get as much off as I can, then I got some acetone back here. We'll get rid of the glue, okay. This is a pretty good lid. See that seal? It's a pickle jar. See this? Button pops up when original seal is broken. So you'll see that suck down when we do it. Okay, we found a fitting. We're going to put it through with a hole this size, through this way, with a bunch of epoxy on it. Okay. So let's put that there. Uh, we're using this oxygen hose. Uh, just don't go ahead and cut these green ends off when, if you get a hole of this stuff because I will try to get a picture. There is ridges inside of there. That means there's three lines, ridges. Get this out of my way. And this clear part, there's ridges in there. It won't necessarily go over top of something. Okay. I've had to put this inside of a connector and connect it because you can't push this over anything. This end fits perfect into the vacuum pump. Okay. This will go over this. Okay, but I want to push it because there's ridges inside the core. I want to push this one up, up, all the way down against there to get as much seal as I can. So, that means I have to leave, uh, I left just a little bit where this changes. It's kind of hard to see. You can't really see the ridges inside of this. We'll try to take a picture. But... I cut this down pretty short because it's kind of big here then it goes inside of the clear hose okay you can almost see the ridges in there so we want to leave a little bit of the be you figure the lid's about that thick you know what I mean okay let's get this done we'll drill the hole epoxy that in there let that cure and we'll be back and we'll test it. I wish I had some marshmallows or something to put in there where you can see how it works under a vacuum. But there we go. We got the hose. It's probably about five feet. Then I can have the pump off out of the way when I'm using it. Uh, caution. Warning. Be careful doing this. You wouldn't want to put a lot of vacuum on this glass jar. It will implode. That means it'll suck it in and break it. And then the pieces can go all over. So it's the opposite of explode, but you can still have this thing fracture. Uh, we're putting, what did I say, that pump pumps about 20 on the, on the vacuum? I don't know what they call it. So let me tell what that is. Uh, the gauge might say inches and mercury, but it's HG whatever. You know what I mean. Here's the pump, or the vacuum gauge. We don't have a T-fitting to show how much it's sucking, but... Vacuum and MM or HG. That should be the fuel pump. Pressure. See? Right there. HD. So, if you know what that is, want to look it up for me, put it in and I'll put that in the description. I'm not going to look up that big word right now. Okay, stay tuned. Okay, we got our jar nice and clean. Even the inside. Just use some acetone nail polish, remember. We made our hole in our lid. Close as we could. We kind of lost that feature but it's still there a little bit and we will epoxy it from this side because it'll be sucking air this way so we want it sealed over here not a whole lot just enough we had this stuck in there once we kind of chewed that up a little bit so be careful doing that stuff uh we did file the hole out a little bit but kind of a little burr there but we'll be back we'll get this glued in there stay tuned Okay, we have that epoxied in there. We want enough around it because the lid is going to flex a little bit. But those fittings are what you find in the part, auto parts store. If you buy a brake bleeder, it's a vacuum pump with a trigger on it, they carry all kinds of fittings because you're going to be testing a lot of different vacuum things on cars. I mean, vacuum operated parts for the heater and different controls on the engine. So you can buy an assortment. I've got a package them around here somewhere uh, around here behind me I don't want to grab it but you know what I mean but just different fittings
a little bit of it smudged through there. I did take a file and file that sharp edge up. I did get that a little rough. That will work. I'm assuming that's about an eighth of an inch rubber hose inside diameter. We'll push over top of that. So, find what fits your hose. There is sealer underneath this black piece, okay? When I stuck it in there, then I covered it on top. So, it's double sealed. There you go. We'll be back to test this thing. So, stay tuned. Okay, we got our hose attached. That's cured. See, this, this seals pretty good. I mean, it really does. I've used this to waterproof, uh, like fat wood, tinder for your fire. Okay, so let, let's plop that in there. I tried to find a ping pong ball. Do you think I could find one? No. Okay, let's get up here nice, close, and personal now. We'll see if we can see this. Did you see that? Yeah. We're trying to, here, let's pause and get rid of the glare. Okay. No time to edit. Uh, you can see this go down, watch. See if you can see it. Did you see that? You see it growing? See like that smoke, whatever mist come off that, like there's moisture in there. You know, be careful. I mean, things under vacuum, you just don't want to. I need to have a valve now to shut this off. I want this like you put wood preserving in wood, like you're going to make knife scales. You put it in a vacuum, so we need a valve on top there. Let's see if we can see it one more time. You seen it, I know you did. I don't know what that mist is. There you go. Success. As long as I can find some kind of valve to put up here to turn this to hold the vacuum. Because you can't let the pump run all day. You might want to put something under vacuum for you know twenty four hours. So thanks for watching. See you next time. Thanks for watching.